We're here to talk about Silicon Valley real estate market, that being Santa Clara, San Mateo, and Alameda counties, and the influence that the greater Bay Area, five regions, 13 counties, has on Silicon Valley. I'm Richard Calhoun, Creekside Realty, working with buyers or sellers since 1981. Please reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk about your real estate dreams or needs. Repeat visitors may want to skip to the first data slide. These are the data slides that we're going to be going over. What I want to do is take a minute and explain some of the differences. The URLs will be described at the end. The YouTube description below has 11 tabs or chapters allowing you to find the segment that you find the most valuable for your particular situation. The unique features of my data includes trying to minimize the impact of the cyclic nature of real estate. There's a significant weekly, monthly, annual, and holiday cycle in real estate. I look at 20 different micro market areas within the three counties that make up Silicon Valley. This lets you know what's going on sort of at the neighborhood level. I explore the impact of Northern California has on Silicon Valley. That's five regions in 13 counties. I use a five week moving period instead of monthly data to eliminate the weekly cycle. My inventory is different than most in the fact that I only look active listings with no underlying contract versus those that are wanting to be continued to show. I don't look at pending sales. Instead, I look at offers accepted in the past week. This eliminates the duration of escrow impact on the data. I look at days of unsold inventory. This is the speed of the market or the turnover rate. I look at the 75th percentile marketing time for the successful sellers versus the average or the median, both of which have a significant negative. I've started looking at the ask price reduction. This is what the sellers are doing to entice the buyers to come in, the average, the 90 percentile, and the distribution of those reductions. I then flip that over and look at what the overbidding is activity. This is what the buyers are doing. I look at the magnitude, the frequency, and the distribution of those overbids. I look at the long-term appreciation since the last nine months of 2015. And then something as simple as the sold price, instead of just following the median price as so many people do, I follow the 10 percentile, the 50 percentile, which is the median, and the 90. This gives you the middle number, the median that so many people follow, but it also gives you the outlying expectations, the range of the price in each one of the areas. And here's the first heat map. What this is doing is showing the active listings right now, January 13th, midnight last night, compared to the 10-year median for the same date. So I'm comparing January 12th, 1159 p.m. to January 12th, 1159 p.m. for the previous 10 years, and then what percentage is the current value. And you can see that two of my colors are clearly wrong. This faint pink, this faint blue, and this faint blue should both be faint pinks. But basically, the red of the color, the less the inventory is. So Foster City at 26%. So it only has 20, one quarter of the inventory that it should have. Now, Foster City is a small micro market area, probably my smallest, and therefore it has a lot of statistical fluctuation. The micro markets were picked based on similar properties, trying to get to 200 properties. And believe it or not, back in the 90s when I did this, I had a lot of micro market areas with 150 to 250 transactions or listings, and we just don't have that volume of transactions anymore or that volume of inventory. You can see there's basically across the Silicon Valley area, there's a shortage of active listings available for buyers. Then we flip over and we look at what the buyers are doing, and there's also a shortage of offers. There's a shortage of buyers. A lot of people ask me, well, the, and a lot of people portray in the media that the lack of transactions is the lack of inventory. And I disagree. And you see that right here with the days on sold inventory. Your DUI in, say, San Mateo is 200% of what it typically is. That means it's taking twice as long to sell the properties. In some of the other areas, 150, there's a lot of areas in all of Alameda County is right at 100%. And there have been times when we've had lower DUI, and this is just relative, this comparing the DUI now to the past 10 years. We've had times when we've had more transactions with fewer inventory giving us a lower DUI. And so we are not, in my opinion, at all being restrained by the lack of inventory. The turnover rate has been faster than it is now, so we're not being limited by the amount of inventory. 
now we're ignoring the past 10 years and just looking at the present day. And the key indicator, at least historical, in my opinion, was this days of unsold inventory. It's a theoretical number of how quickly the market would sell all the existing inventory at the existing rate of sales with no new listings coming on the marketplace. It's a benchmark. It's a turn rate. It's inventory to demand ratio, which in a free economy is important. Now, here is a number that isn't theoretical. This is what the, what I call the long typical seller. How long is it taking to sell the property? You can see basically under three weeks, I consider that to be a red hot seller's market. At one week, it's saturated red because I don't think we're going to see numbers below, at least not significantly below one week. Up to three weeks is a red hot seller's market. From three to six weeks is what I'm calling a balanced market. And above six weeks is a buyer's marketplace because the, it's a, you know long marketing times. So you can see some areas in San Mateo County have that long marketing time. And even Saratoga, Las Gatas in Santa Clara County or Oakland in Alameda County. So there are areas where the typical seller, the successful seller, I'm not including the unsuccessful seller, but just those sellers that are successful, how long are they taking to sell? And in Santa Clara County, basically you're under 50 days except for Saratoga Las Gatas, which is typically a slower marketplace. Don't know why, but it's always has been since 1997. You get into San Mateo County, which is normally quicker than Santa Clara County, is actually slower than Santa Clara County now, you can see you got two areas just shy of 90 uh, Bay cities, which are all the cities, San Mateo, San Carlos, along the Bay side, right at 60 days, right at two months. And only if Redwood City comes in at 13 days, that's the only really hot spot. Foster City, as I already mentioned, is a very small marketplace and one that, you know, is just there, there for inclusion and really not very bearing on the marketplace. You go up into Alameda County and a lot of the areas are right around three, four weeks. There are some areas at around 50 days and then Oakland is at 80 days. This is a relatively new metric for me and actually appears to be a very valuable metric. It's how much are the sellers reducing their ask price? And this is what I call a tight metric because the vast majority of the sellers don't reduce their price. They do their homework, they get accurate, they price their home on the marketplace, they come on, they sell quickly. They don't even have time to reduce the price. Basically here, anything from a quarter percent price reduction to a half percent raise, which does happen, you can see right now, it's, all, it's seven tenths of a percent increase in price in Campbell, Cambrian, Santa Clara and Willow Glen. Most of the areas are a slight de decrease. And you can see some areas like Oakland and Atherton, the expensive areas in San Mateo County, are actually right around 5% discount. This is the frequency. So how common are price reductions? So you can see in Santa Clara County, basically from 10 to 20% of the sellers are doing price reductions. If you go up into San Mateo County, that jumps fairly significantly. It looks like it jumps from 20 to 40% of the sellers are doing their price reduction. And Alameda County is in between with basically 15 to 25 percent of the sellers doing price reductions. Just globally, again, the red of the color, the less frequent price reductions, the blue of the color, the more frequent price reductions are. Here is the overbid. This is flipping over and looking what the buyers are doing. How much is the average buyer going in above asking price? Here you can see in Santa Clara County, basically buyers are going about 5% over the seller's asking price. San Mateo County Coast, almost 5% below the sellers. And you can see how blue that is. Most of San Mateo County is you know, so, somewhat balanced. In this valley, even in a slow marketplace, you get about a 1%, 2% overbid. And that's sort of what San Mateo County is coming in at. You go over into Pleasanton and it's around 3% of overbidding. Again, the concept is the pinker, the redder the color, the hotter the marketplace, the more it favors the seller, the bluer the color, the more it favors the buyer. Here's the same concept, frequency of overbidding, how common are overbidding. You can see in Santa Clara County, you're basically 50 to two thirds of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. In San Mateo County, quite a bit lower, maybe a quarter to 50% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. And this is where Alameda County actually shines Basically a third, and that's only one area, basically 50 to 90% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price in Alameda County. Here's the long-term appreciation as measured since the last nine months of 2015. 
So I took that nine month period of time, established that median, and I picked that period of time. I was trying to get a whole year, but I wanted price stability and the prices shot up fairly significantly in the first three months of 2015. So I took just the last nine months of 2015 and I'm comparing it to the price now. You can see that in Santa Clara County, a lot of your areas are at 80%. In San Mateo County, more around 40 to 50%. And in uh, Alameda County, you're basically from 50 to 80% of appreciation. Here is your price range. The middle number is the median that most people follow. I like to sandwich it by including the 10 percentile, sort of the cheapest home price home, single family home that you'd expect to find in a geographical area, and then the highest 90 percentile. Here, the price is not favoring buyer or seller, but simply blue is the lower price, red is the higher price, and you can see the distribution. Your expensive areas are right along the central western portion of Santa Clara and San Mateo County. Your more affordable areas are outlying in Alameda County and in Southeast Santa Clara County. And here's the summary of all the data that we just went over. So you can start over on the left-hand side in the geographical area you want and find out what the market conditions are, or start over on the right-hand column with either the estimated monthly mortgage payment, assuming an 80% loan, or starting with the price range, if you've already been pre-qualified by a lender, and see what the market conditions are on the areas that you would be able to afford to purchase a property. Now we're taking all those 20 micro market areas, putting them all in a blender and seeing what's happening in Silicon Valley. And we're gonna look at the number of offers accepted and that's this orange number down here. And you can see the offers being accepted is below where it typically is. If it was typical, it would be right up here on the black line. Inventory is also low, but a little bit higher than the offers. The DUI, the speed of the marketplace, is essentially right at 100%. And you might say, how can the inventory be low but higher than the offers and yet DUI be even? And that's because I look at each of the three components individually, and each of the three components, the median for the past 10 years, can be in a different year. And that's how you don't end up at the number that might be logical. For example, here, if I just put numbers on it, this is about 68, 69%. And this is still going to be somewhere just about 75%. If you did a ratio between 75 over 68, you'd expect it to be significantly above 100%. And it's not. And that's because, as I said earlier, the data is each done independently and not in the same year. Here is a huge takeaway. Right now, we only sold 733 properties in the last five weeks, comparing it to the same date, January 17th. You can see we're the lowest by quite a bit. Our previous record low was 978. So we're 250 homes roughly below. We're 25% below the lowest we've sold in the last 25 years. That would normally be significant. You can see it's the greatest number below the lowest percentage. We have had, as you can see, basically record low volume of for a long period of time. Yes, we got up into 23rd position, but 24th and 25th for all the about 26 weeks that are up here. That's significant. But at this time of the year, you have to discount it because there's so little transactions you can see right here, 733 versus some of these other years where, you know, different weeks, but we are at 3,000. So we're only selling 25% of the volumes that we do at peak weeks because of the huge cyclic nature of real estate. And that's just a feature of the real estate market. It's very cyclical. And that's one of the reasons why I look and see, you know, what's happening compared to the same time of the previous years. Now what we're doing is looking at estimated payments, and this is all of Silicon Valley, so the three counties in a blender. We're looking at the payments for the most expensive home, the red line, that's the 90 percentile home. The blue line at the bottom is the 10 percentile home, and what's happening with the payments, and that takes into consideration both the interest rate and the price of the home. To calculate the payment, I assume an 80 percent loan. I'm using the national jumbo interest rate and just do a calculation. So you can see that in all three cases, the payment peaked right basically at the end of third quarter, beginning of fourth quarter, and it's come down fairly significantly. 
in all cases, we're getting back to about the same level we were in 2022 when the market was crashing. We're still quite a bit above the level we were in 2021 when the market was on fire. Here is the price reductions. This is a distribution of each week. And I'm starting off basically a year ago on the January 17th, 2023. And that's the blue dotted line here. The blue dashed line is the worst year that I have uh, measurements for, which was December 27th, 2022. And then what we're going to do is step through roughly four or five weeks at a time to approximate monthly jumps. I don't do anything on a monthly basis because you have to look at the calendar. The calendar is not very good for looking at data because there's 365 or 366 days in a year, and there's 364 in a 52 weeks. And that's why my full year starts March 1st, and then I go forward every seven days or my real estate year. To, so I only have one discontinuity at the end of February, and it's either a one-day or two-day discontinuity, but it's the same time every year. This time, what I'm looking at is going back four or five weeks, trying to approximate months by keeping it close to the 17th. But And then in a monthly data, you have anywhere from a low of 28 days to a high of 31 days, but that's not an even number of weeks. And real estate is very cyclical based on a week because of open houses, looking at offers after open houses, there's a huge weekly cycle. So instead of looking at four to four and a half weeks, I look at five weeks to try to get rid of that cycle. There's 11 weeks, 10 months, nine months, right there is the peak seven months ago. Then we sort of jumped around a little bit. We came down. Now we're doing weekly for the last 13 weeks. I just look at every week and you can see the line has been basically up a little bit and then brought back down by the actual end of the year holiday. I anticipate these price reductions are going to become less and we're going to be moving back up in the direction of the upper left-hand corner of this graph. Flipping over and doing the same thing on overbidding, You'll see, in this case, the worst week we ever had was way back in November 30th of 2021, the fallout of the World Trade Center. The best week we had was March 29th of 2022. And this is based on closings. So the peak of the market actually happened about five weeks earlier than that. And the reason I'm going to discuss this for a second is five weeks earlier than March 29th is right around February 14th, middle of February of 2022. And that's where the price reductions show the market actually peaked at. And so that's a leading indicator of when the market's turning. And that makes sense. Sellers are on the marketplace. They thought they read the marketplace, but all of a sudden the market isn't as hot as they thought it was. And so they're more frequently doing price reductions. Okay, back to overbidding. So now this is what the buyer's doing. You can see we climbed. It's a more stable index. There's the peak, basically. And then you bounced and you drifted down very slowly. And again, this is lagging behind about five weeks of where the market is. There is the bottom of where we are right now. Again, that's five weeks ago. I think we've drifted up a little bit already in the market, but that's not going to be reflected on this data for another couple of weeks. This is looking at the active inventory compared to what you expect. So the purple line for the next several slides is the data. And this is all of Silicon Valley, Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, and Alameda County in a blender. The red line is the least you'd expect, which is the 10 percentile. The gray line is the median. And the blue line is the least you'd expect, the coolest you'd expect, which is in this case, the most inventory. So when you flip over to offers, a hot market and re cold market place a reverse. So your red and blue line are going to be reversed on the graph, but they mean the same thing. Blue favors the buyer consistently, red favors the seller. The lack of inventory is favoring the seller. And you can see we were coming down and we turned around and we went up. And basically what you're seeing from beginning of second quarter of 2023, we more or less have followed the red line exactly. We're having a market that's behaving as you would expect, with very limited inventory. It did not behave like you expected for, during first quarter because you went from typical inventory to a shortage of inventory. And if we start moving from the red line to the gray line to the blue line, 
that's not acting typical. Typical will be following one of these lines. It's a matter of which line. And it's not necessarily right on the line because you're going to have years between your 10 percentile and your 50 percentile and your 90 percentile. And you're also going to have years below. In fact, you could argue that we're slightly below the red line right now. Here is taking those curved lines, straightening them out. Your gray line that was curved is now a straight line. And you can see whether you have more inventory, which would favor the buyer, or less inventory that would favor the seller. You can see my last week's data points down here, right around 73% of the inventory you'd expect. So clearly a shortage of inventory. Here's the offers, same concept. So you can see right now we have a, the least amount of offers that you'd expect. We're right on the 10 percentile curve. You can see the curve has not yet turned. It's going to start turning. It's going to be almost flat for next week because we're on the 10 percentile. And then after that, you'd expect the number of offers to start climbing pretty rapidly. If you were in a typical marketplace, it would turn a little bit more abruptly. Here again, now we've straightened out that gray median line, and you can see the inventory is only 70%, closer to 69% of the offers level that you would expect. So we're only, we're missing 30, 31% of the transactions. Here's Silicon Valley days of unsold inventory. So now the same concept. So the speed of the marketplace, despite the lack of inventory and the lack of offers, the speed of the marketplace is exactly where you'd expect it to be. And it's been basically tre trending that way since maybe the halfway through first quarter of 2023. Yeah, it fell a little bit short here, but it was pretty close. And now it's right on there. I also take a second and point out from 2023 to 2025, I expanded the axis so you could see what's happening. It's roughly twice as spread out as over here. This way you can have the data all the way back to 2014 and you can see what's happening more reasonable. So I will do this each year. I'm putting the trend line on there so you can see that you would expect days of unsold inventory to go up next week. So the market slowed down a little bit more. And then after that, you'd expect the market to start speeding up fairly significantly. If it's sped up next week, it's only one week off but that way you can at least know what you're expecting and how it's comparing to normal. And again, on the next slide, we'll be taking this curvy gray line and basically straightening it out and then seeing what's happening to the raw data. Here you can see you're right at 100%. Last week we were down at 90%, so you're having a lot of statistical fluctuation. And that happens because the raw inventory being so low and we're being at a time of the year where it shifts so dramatically. Here's the days on marketplace for the long typical seller. Here you can see that in a hot marketplace, the sellers are selling, 75% of the sellers are selling down here at 20 days. Typically you're up here at 40. Right now we're at about 35. You can see we're between the typical marketplace and a hot marketplace, much closer to a typical. That has changed fairly significantly in fourth quarter of 2023. You can see that for all of third quarter, we were right on a hot marketplace. Then basically maybe two, three weeks into the fourth quarter, we started to slow down. The sellers are taking longer to sell their properties. Again, we're taking that gray typical line, stretching it out. I guess what happened is even though we were right on the red line, and then the second part of the third quarter, you turn and you pull further away from the gray line, which is noticeable here, where partway through you pulling further away and up you're coming. You know, it's a little confusing, but basically, again, this is the gray line pulled out and then longer marketing time would favor the buyer, shorter marketing time would favor the sellers that have been enjoying a short marketing time in fourth quarter of 2023. And now that marketing time is growing quite a bit. Here's your ask price reductions. Here is 2022 and here... Remember, we were looked at the other thing, which was the overbidding, which was the end of March, which is, I think it was March 29th, which was basically right on the first, second quarter line here, because that's going to be April the 1st. And you can see the seller's price reductions happen just below my red dot, which is about the middle of February. So even though the consumers and even, frankly, the vast majority of real estate agents didn't notice the market changed until May, probably April or May, the market is telling you, hey, look, we're changing way back here 
in middle of February. Now, what you might argue is the data rolls over typically at that time of the year anyway, and it does, but you know, when does it roll over? You know, the gray line rolls over here into the second quarter by maybe a week. The hot marketplace is harder to tell. You know, it's got an up and down fairly significant fluctuation, but the fact that it went rolled over and then continued to keep coming down is significant. With more time following this metric, and I did reverse engineer it, what you'll see is, was this actually an indication that the market changed, which is one indication, or was it just the typical rollover of the metric regardless of what the market's doing? Here's taking the same number and putting it on a percentage basis. The gray line, again, is the same gray line, but just made horizontal by looking at 100%. And if you come back to 2022, first quarter, here you could actually argue that the percentage, and this is why one of the reasons you do it, the at raw data was changing more rapidly in a direction that favored the buyer, actually starting much earlier in the calendar year. You know, you, your peak is right here. That's only one or two weeks into the quarter. So the relative degree, you know, it's hard to see in the previous slide what's happening on the percentage. This is doing the math for you. So you can see you're at record high levels, but you can see you're falling down. That would again say that this is a pretty good leading indicator of what the market's doing. Now, because the price reductions is a good indicator and a tight metric, what I'm looking at is the sellers that are taking the largest price reductions. Where is the air price reduction compared to typical? So typical is the gray line. Blue is the sellers taking bigger price reductions than you'd expect. Red is the lease, the hot marketplace. And here you can see we're basically a little bit below cool marketplace and noteworthy. And the significance of it is to tell in the future. Notice the rapid decline here at a time when the market's normally improving as there's typically fewer price reductions. So even though there's typically less price reductions, since the first of the year going into the first quarter. Here we are actually having more price reductions. Here it is on a percentage basis, and you can see you're pulling away from the 100%. So the amount of reductions is increasing, and we're now 40% more than you typically are. And this is the magnitude of the sellers that are taking the biggest 10% price reductions. This is the frequency of the price reductions for the whole valley. And you can see the frequency is right where you'd expect it to be, right on the gray line. That's telling you that it's not the more sellers are taking price reductions. It's the sellers that are taking price reductions are taking larger price reductions. And here you can see right at 100%. So this is the gray line stretched out to be horizontal. And you can see that the price reductions up here, as the market was still getting it, sellers were still adjusting to the new market, the price reductions were two times more common than they normally are, and it got all the way down to only 75%, and right now we're basically at 100%. Again, it's not the frequency of the sellers taking price reductions, it's the magnitude of the sellers that are taking the price reductions that has increased. Now we're flipping over and looking at the overbids. We're basically right at typical. You can see gray is typical, purple is the actual data. Right now, you're coming in somewhere around 3.5% over ask price. Here is blown out onto the gray line being stretched. You can see we were taking bigger overbids than typical, almost 2% above where you typically were. But right now, we're back down right at the typical level. Here's the frequency of all the overbidding. And again, the frequency of overbidding is right where you'd expect. It is noteworthy that this turned up a little bit earlier than it normally does. But again, remember, we're sort of looking in the rearview mirror and little shifts like this when you're looking at only one year's of data is pretty hard to really make too much out of it. The typical here, the trend lines are based on the median or percentile of 10 years of data, so more stable. Here's the frequency of overbidding. So you can see there was an abrupt turn right at the end of the year which means the abrupt turn happened five weeks before the end of the year. So basically right at Thanksgiving. So now instead of looking at Silicon Valley as a whole, we're looking at the three counties. We're looking at San Mateo County in the orange. We're looking at Alameda County in the gray. And we're looking at Santa Clara County in the blue. 
and we're looking at the raw count of active inventory. So you can see that inventory typically is up here. Now it's way down here, but we have to compare the same time of the year. Just last year, we had more inventory. So we have significantly less inventory than we did last year. And if you start looking across, in 2022, Santa Clara County had less inventory than it did now. Alameda County had less inventory. And San Mateo County had less inventory. But this is probably very close to the second least amount of inventory that we've had in the last 10 years. Here's the number of offers accepted. You're basically right here. Now, San Mateo County has had fewer offers than they've had. Alameda County has had fewer offers than they've ever had. Santa Clara County is very, very close to what we had in 2023. And I would think 2023 is a little bit lower. So Silicon Valley probably has fewer offers overall. Santa Clara County is about tied for last year. So again, it depends on what you're looking at, what metric you're looking at. But you can see transactions are definitely down. Here's your days of unsold inventory. You can see that Santa Clara County is the fastest, followed by Alameda County, but very closely by San Mateo. And note of the big difference, Santa Clara County is sitting here at somewhere around 37 days of unsold inventory. Alameda County is maybe at 58, and San Mateo is somewhere around 62. Also, let me know if you actually want these call-outs. I've, I've dropped them off because I thought by moving the axis over to the right-hand side, it was easy enough to get our ballpark number. And I think it's more important to focus on the trend up versus the actual raw number. And you can see this trend up happens every year right at the beginning of the year. Basically, it's a function of the market. Sellers don't want to put their house on the marketplace over the holidays. They have had a change in their life pattern that requires they sell. They hold off to the after the year, and then they get start flooding the marketplace right after New Year's, i.e. right at this time of the year. They we're impacted a little bit by Martin Luther King holiday this weekend. So this particular weekend isn't a good weekend to go on the marketplace. But next week, I would expect inventories to, across the board to be up quite a bit. Now we're looking at the, the marketing time for that successful seller. You can see Santa Clara County is the fastest at 40 days. Alameda County is a little bit better at about 44 days. And San Mateo County is clearly the slowest. It's just under 70 days. And you can see that this is the second slowest time that San Mateo County has had in the last 10 years. The only time that was about the same was last year, 2023. All the other years we're down below 60 days, basically. And here you're almost at 70 days. Clearly, San Mateo County is slower than the other two counties. Here's looking at your magnitude of price reductions. San Mateo County has the most price reductions. Alameda County is doing a huge change and catching up fairly significantly. Santa Clara County has the least price reductions. And they're almost about, you know, 100% would be the no price reduction whatsoever. So you're rarely there. You were there in 2021, but it's hard to have no sellers to it taking a price reduction. Here's the frequency of price reduction. Santa Clara County, again, is the best, followed by Alameda County, halfway in between, and San Mateo County is the slowest. And the frequency of price reductions, you can see San Mateo County has had more frequent price reductions. So, you know, marketing time's the longest it's ever been. Sellers have done more frequent price reductions. Here's overbid. So this is what the buyers are doing. And they're overbidding the least in San Mateo County at under 2%, about 1.5%. Santa Clara County, maybe 3 and a quarter percent And Alameda County has the most overbidding. So even though Alameda County had the second longest marketing time, it's got the best overbidding. Here's your frequency of overbidding. San Mateo County has the least amount of overbidding, followed by Santa Clara County. And then Alameda County has the most overbidding at basically 60% of the sellers getting more than their asking price. And again, I'm going to point out that the x-axis is expanded for the last two years, compressed for the past. So you can go back and look at the history all the way back to 2014 and not lose the resolution for the recent times. I don't always get the map lined up, ex graph lined up exactly right at the transition here, but it's pretty close. You can see I'm a little off, but pretty darn close. It really doesn't skew the graph. Here's the appreciation. Again, you got to be a little careful on appreciation. And I debated whether I, I wanted to do this 
on the expanded graph or not. I decided to do it to be consistent and I'm gonna try to follow up. But the reason it's a little awkward on appreciation, you can sort of see the appreciation trend would be straight through here. And now you have to slope that down by a factor of two roughly to get the wider horizontal spacing. So it's difficult to eyeball, but I think it's important to see these fluctuations from week to week And San Mateo County is the biggest because it's the smallest geographical area and therefore the fewest transactions. And when you start getting into Alameda County and Santa Clara, it's more stable, but you can see that there is fluctuation week after week after week. Here's the price over time. You can see that San Mateo County is slightly lower and I left the line down apparently. So you can see that the orange is just below the blue, but the right, those two lines are right on top. My concern was if I moved the line up to where it should be, it would have blurred it out on the difference. Same concept here. I actually tried to move them, but I favored the blue a little bit on the upside and the orange a little bit on the downside. So you can see that Santa Clara County is more expensive than San Mateo County. And this is on regular paper. The previous was on logarithmic paper. Here's the estimated payments for the three counties. And here's the raw numbers for each county, Santa Clara, San Mateo, and Alameda, or Silicon Valley as a whole. You can see that we've had a huge increase in the number of inventory coming on the list market in the last past five weeks. So I'm looking back over the five weeks and Silicon Valley saw a 12% increase. Silicon Valley only saw five, but San Mateo a 20% and Alameda County a 17.5% increase in the number of new listings over the past five weeks compared to just a week ago. You go back five weeks from this week and then go back six weeks. That six weeks back has a lot less inventory than the current week. So the current week is a larger number of new listings than the six week back. That's what it's really telling you. But we're past the holidays. We're going to start picking up inventory. We'll pick up quite a bit more next week because we don't have Martin Luther King's holiday. Here's your active inventory. It's picked up a little bit. Your number of offers is still going down because you go back over five weeks you, where your active inventory, you're looking at the real, just the number. Your days of unsold inventory is the key. Going up 11 days is huge, but not at this time of the year. And that's why I look at so much metrics is there's different things that you have to look at at different times of the year. Now we're shifting gears and leaving Silicon Valley and we're going to focus on the greater Bay Area. Silicon Valley is the first region. The second region is the city, San Francisco and Marin, North Bay, Central Valley and Central Coast. Here are starting in the reverse order are the numbers that were, are in each one of the metrics that I'm following. Here lets you look at the inventory. You can see inventory is down across all the areas. You can see that inventory has uh, turned around and started going up in all those areas. Normal behavior. Number of offers is still going down because you're looking back in the past five weeks. Here's the days of unsold inventory. Days of unsold inventory is still rising because of the falling number of offers that will change pretty rapidly. Here's the marketing time. You can see they're increasing. That will continue to increase based on past years. I apologize for this line here. If I get rid of this line here, it shifts everything over. I need to spend some time understanding Microsoft a little bit better, but you can see the break point right about horizontal with my laser pointer. That's gonna be your San Francisco Marin where they're get, taking a 4% price reduction. Central Valley is next at about 2.5%. Next is the North Bay at about a 2% increase. And the Central Valley and Silicon Valley are roughly the same at about 1.5% price reductions. And those are the seller price reduction. This is the frequency. The cities is taking the biggest price reduction. Silicon Valley is taking the least. Again, I had to have that extra data point at zero. And I will try to resolve that. I should be able to because some of the slides let me do what I was thought I was doing and others did not. Silicon Valley has the most overbidding followed by the cities. But sort of surprising, the cities are doing the biggest price reductions, but here they're having the second highest buyers overbid. Then North Bay, Central Valley, and Central Coast. Frequency of overbidding, how common is overbidding? You can see it in Central Coast, it's the least common and it's the most frequent in Silicon Valley. The other three are pretty close together. 
total appreciation. The cities is by far doing the worst at only about 25, 28% appreciation. The Central Valley is doing the best. Silicon Valley is in second place. And then the Central Coast and the North Bay are right together. And that's the appreciation since the last nine months of 2015. Here's your actual price. You can see that the cities, which is San Francisco and Marin, is still more expensive than Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley gets pulled down by Alameda County, Central Coast, North Bay, and then the Central Valley. Here's those payments. The payments are going to be in the same order as price because the formula is the same. With that, we've been talking about week number two. You can see in our YouTube archive of this episode by going to YouTube, or if you want to type in less, tiny URL, S-V-R-E-M-G for Silicon Valley Real Estate Market Graphs. This is what I call the root URL. If you add in the purple suffix 2024, you get to the live presentation, nine o'clock Saturday morning. If you add in the suffix H for handout 2024-01-13, the year, month, date code, you get the handout. It is up. I got it up about 10 minutes beforehand. And if you want any particular episode, you put in the year, month, date code. I'm Richard Calhoun, real estate broker with Creekside Realty. My contact information is there. I'm open for questions. I don't see any questions. So have a great week. Take care. Bye for now.